If we have a fictitious amount of $175 to spend on a solar panel, let's look and see what that gets us with our Jinko 395 here compared to our Solyndra 157s, both practically brand new panels. Putting together one of these arrays is actually quite simple. If you think about each of these individual tubes as being a 92 volt solar panel, then this here is gonna be all the same, uh, like your negative, right? And this here is your positive. So that connector right there gets connected so that it continues up. So that's all at the same potential, same voltage. Do the same with that connector. That one, that one, that one, that one. So that essentially makes it so that this is one big panel. So then we've got one, two, three in series. In order to put them in series, all we gotta do is take these connectors here to each other. And then we'll have our main negative and our main positive. Don't quote me on which one's negative, which one's positive. I'll find out in a minute. All right, so I tested with the multimeter. This one is in fact positive. So with this being a Tyco connector, I'm just gonna go ahead and snip it. I'm gonna throw an MC4 on here so it can connect to my standard equipment. If this is positive, then I want to put, well, that's the one I just snipped. I want to put this connector on because this is positive from the panel. As you can see, a little positive marking there. And this is the cable blocker that goes inside. So we get that prepped. Stick it in. Prep all the wires. Prep. Just pop that puppy in. You hear it snap. And done. So we can then connect that to our positive wire going back to our converter charger. Let's go do that to the negative end. So do not trust that just because this is a, um, a male connector, so you can see the terminal inside is the male, the actual metal piece, uh, do not trust that just because it's male that means that it's negative, because that's not always the case with type of connectors. Fours should always be the case. But again, grabbing your multimeter and checking doesn't hurt. We've got our negative wire here. Okay, so just kidding. I was going to do the three in series and use this inverter charger over here that accepts up to 500 volt input. The problem is that when I get to testing my Jinko, it's only 50 volts. That I would need more than two of them to get into there. So it's still gonna be a little bit of a problem because even at 50 volts to charge a 48 volt battery, I'm gonna need two Jinkos in a series. <sighs> so I'm gonna use this Make Sky Blue or a Palmister instead. So I'll still have to use two Jinkos so I'm gonna have twice as much Jinko in price than I will in these cylindras. So let's get these reconfigured into a uh, 3P and 2S configuration. Get the voltage down to like 180 or so, so I don't blow my controller over here, and we'll reconnect. All right, so now we're in a 3P, 2S configuration, or 2S, 3P, anyway. So we should have around 180 open circuit voltage and uh, each of these panels is about two and a half amps. So still only about, what, seven and a half amps at 180 volts. Means our 10 gauge wire is way overkill. All right, so we're getting a solid, what, 20, 25 watts or so. Okay, scratch some of what I said earlier because I was using that Make Sky Blue controller. And I think I blew it the other day. 
I got confused with some of these Tyco connectors and ended up connecting it opposite on the solar side. And you know how earlier I was only showing like 12 watts input on those Jinkos and now I'm getting like 54. So it seems to be working better here. So what I went ahead and did, as long as I was at it anyway, is I set up two charge controllers going to the same 48 volt battery here. And over here, we've got our two Jinkos, 395 watt in series, that's by 800 watts. And then here we've got our six Solyndra solar panels. Um, and both of these are in partial shade right now. You can see we're about, about right. I mean, I could calculate the percentages on that, but this is about 800 watts and this is about nine, nine and change. So it looks like the shading performance is about the same between the two. Here is our 800 watt array. Sun's starting to come across. And then of course our Solyndra array. And we're just waiting for that sun to come across. Now if I had these set up the other way, uh, other orientation so that like those two were getting full sun and the sun was coming across this way, and once those two got full sun, we would have a series string in full sun and start getting probably a couple hundred watts. But the way that it's set up now, I'll have to wait for the sun to hit uh, the full array to start getting it. Sometimes I really crack myself up. So the sun's starting to come across a little more. You can see the Jinkos are going up and down a little bit, but they're a little higher. This one's gone down to one watt. Why did it go down to one watt? Well, I don't know. Let's go to the status screen and see. Oh, error 71. Uh, PV input to voltage is too high. <clears throat> the, um, the label on these, the manual on these, you'll see some places where they say like 150, 160, and sometimes say 190 for PV input. Um, this one's definitely protecting itself at 170, so I'd say 160 or 150 is going to be the limit. <sighs> Which is fine. It's fine. It just means we can't do two in series, so we need to throw this all into parallel. One way of doing that would be to take these three and stick them up there, and I could use all the existing wiring. Except that now this is an MC4 connector that's not going to connect correctly to that connector there, which is a Tyco problem with having different types of connectors so instead what I'm gonna do because when I sell these probably a lot of people are gonna be putting them in just one long parallel string and they would need both of these to be MC4 anyhow so I'm gonna I'm gonna unconnect this and I'm gonna put MC4s on there and I'll just do a branch connector um, here at the end and we'll put these two strings into parallel um, and you can do without fusing you can do eight of these in parallel uh, up to 23 amps and there are the short circuit on these is like 2.6 amps or something so eight of these in parallel so this is six no big deal no fusing needed so let's throw throw some more connectors on there these half cells are coming into play because only half this panel almost half the panel has coverage which means we're getting to 400 potential watts or two to four whatever it is um, so once that clears up we'll get just a little bit more but these guys these guys are baking okay i moved the panels around a little bit um, really just to get them pointed more at the sun so i did the little stick a thing on the panel trick see where the shadows are at They're really close of course these are supposed to be flat mounted so they're just flat mounted so just to recap, 790 watts there, 942 watts there, and we'll see here. Oh look, I don't have them both plugged in. And this of course is just going to be a comparison between the two using the same type of charge controller. We've got 630-ish watts coming in from the Solyndras, uh, that's the 942 watt array. And over here we got our 790 we got 760 watts. Now these aren't real wattages because these are optimistic, but looking at the uh, BMS, I calculated the percentage and this is getting at about 79% from the panels. That's uh, wattage coming into the BMS divided over 790 from the labels. 
And then on the cylindras, we're getting about 53%. Now that's by design. The cylindras aren't, cylindras aren't supposed to peak as much as a standard solar panel, but um, they should get more, uh, more power morning and evening compared to these when the sun starts setting some. If these were on a tracker, obviously they would perform just fine uh, into the evening compared to the cylindras, but that's a difference. So what we've got here, essentially this costs twice as much as this, but the power we're getting is within 120 watts of each other. So that obviously price-wise is doing really well. And it gets even better if you talk about getting these by the pallet. There's only 16 of these to a pallet. That's two and a half kilowatts. Most people need more than two and a half kilowatts for projects. Um, so if you got a full two and a half kilowatts, that's 400 bucks. That would only get you like, what, three of these panels? So you would get about a 1200 watts compared to 2500 watts. And they seem to perform just fine. You know what, let's spice it up a little bit. I've got some 230 watt panels here. These were installed out in California for like 11 years. Some of them have some little cracks and whatnot in them. Um, let's put four of these out. That'd be about a thousand watt. That's just shy of 200 bucks. So it's, it's around the same price point. Let's see what that does. Since the sun has moved a little bit, we'll re-baseline here. We're getting about 700 watts off of our two 395 panels and we're getting 661 off of our cylindras. So we're gonna move these cylinder cables over to the 230 watt panels that I've set up here. So let's do that real quick. All right. So the next thing I need to do though, is these are laying flat on the ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay the Jinkos flat on the ground. So that way I've got a comparison between brand new 790 watts and use 230 times four, which is what, nine, 20? Yeah, I think that's, that's 920 watts. That's actually really close to the cylindrus. Um, so yeah, let's lay these flat. So we're hitting 650 with these four 230 watt panels on the ground. Uh, and the sun's almost overhead, so that shouldn't matter much anyway. Oh, that's funny. I'm like, why is it not going up? My styrofoam blocks blew onto the panel. So we're comparing 650 watts from 920 watts worth of used 10 year old panels to 714 watts from 790 watts of new panels. Those are optimistic numbers, but that should work fine for percentages anyway. So who wins here? 